I am Fred Dotson, and I now present to you the Reality Creation Procedure. Step 1. Take responsibility for your current reality. Acknowledge, accept, and own what is as it is. Step 2. Choose a new reality. Define it and be specific about it. Step 3. Connect to the infinite or most high, to the force field or energy field that creates everything. Step 4. Align with a new reality in commitment. Step 5. Let go by fully accepting the opposite or worst case. Step 6. Let go of how, when, where, and let Source take care of it. Step 7. Demonstrate and experience the new reality. Step 1. Take responsibility for your current reality. Own, accept, and acknowledge everything you are experiencing right now. Before you get what you want, you have to want what you got. One of many ways to do this is to see your current experience as having been created by numerous subconscious and half-conscious and conscious belief clusters. So, for example, if you experience not being good at swimming, you can trace that back to a half-conscious or subconscious belief that you're holding, which would be, I am not good at swimming. So the belief is an exact copy of the experience, usually. And if you like, you could put that on a sheet of paper in the middle and circle it, and then write up all the clustered thoughts, associations, emotions, and belief supporting and surrounding that. So a belief is like a, a table, and that table has legs which support it. Reasons and additional beliefs, such as, well, my dad says it's genetic. Not swimming good is genetic. And another belief that would confirm that could be, I read up on this and found it to be true. And those are all not truths, even though you experience them and see them as truth. They're not absolute. Only very, very, very few things in life are absolute. They are relative. They are beliefs that you can deliberately let go of. So by doing so, by bringing these uh, beliefs to light, you bring them up from the subconscious to consciousness, you accept and acknowledge them, and in that way they hold no more subconscious power over you. So the basics of the first step are to embrace your current reality, either by this technique or by inner embracing and releasing or by simply acknowledging what is as it is. You can't really change reality before you acknowledge what already is, what's already being created. By taking responsibility for what is already being created, um, you can change what is being created because you're saying, I am the creator of this. I created these thoughts consciously or subconsciously. You might also view my video called Clearing Limitations for another method to take responsibility, to own your current reality, and shift it to what you prefer. Step two is to choose a new reality and be specific about it. So if you use the belief clusters technique, you would simply define what you want instead. Define the beliefs you do prefer. If one of those beliefs was, I'm not good at swimming, then you define, I am good at swimming. You see, before you can create a new reality, you have to define that reality 
No new reality can come to be without first defining what it is. Every reality that exists in your life and other people's lives was first thought, consciously or subconsciously, was first in mind. And if your dad said that uh, not good swimming is genetic, you could replace that with, well, good swimming can be trained. Good swimming can be learned. And so forth and so on. And you could do that with your entire belief cluster uh, list or piece of paper. And these are only a few samples of clustered beliefs. Normally, um, such a exercise goes on for the entire page or maybe even two pages. Another way to be specific and define a new reality is by scripting it, by writing out a script of the reality you would prefer to be experiencing. Another way to do it, of course, is to visualize and imagine that reality. But you have to make it strong enough in order to leave an imprint on the subconscious. So there has to be detail, specifics, and emotion in order to make that imprint. Otherwise, it will not be strong enough and the old reality will resurface. Step three is to connect with the infinite or most high to recall a higher context, a power that can create anything and everything. And by understanding that higher context, you psychologically, spiritually, and physically gain more energy because you believe in a context for which creating this is easy. There's a force field that has created numerous galaxies, universes, stars, planets, humans, it can also create these relatively small wishes that you have. Provided that your intention, goal, or wish is within the domain of your power, fairly realistic, and also authentic, that you authentically believe that is good for you and that fits to you. So this step can take the form of uh, going to zero point, which I describe in my book Parallel Universes of Self, of becoming very silent, pure, infinite awareness, of going down to nothing in order to create a new something. That's one way to do this step. Uh, another way to do it would be by putting your attention to what you consider the source of all things, the most high whether you symbolize that as a shining light or not. Another way to do it would be the religious way with prayer. In any case, you become aware of a higher context, a higher force and power, which creates all things. Step number four is to align with the new reality in full commitment. Not as a mere wish, not as a mere desire, but as an obligation, a promise, something that goes through your deepest being. You can feel it in your body. You can visualize it as a vision rather than a fleeting thought. Something you're connected to intellectually, emotionally, physically. Something you can be loyal to until it comes true being loyal without constantly thinking about back doors or plan B's. Something that you're so loyal to that if any objection or doubt comes up, it does not cause you to fall back into the old reality. That's the purpose of commitment. If you do this as a visualization, then alignment means not to observe it from the outside, but to go into the movie yourself and feel as if you've already achieved it. Step number five is let go by fully accepting the opposite or worst case. And this refers to the dual nature of reality in mankind. So if you're no longer afraid of the opposite or worst case, you've transcended it, and it is then much easier to maintain and hold your new thought, your new energy, your new intention. 
For example, if you're no longer afraid of losing all of the money you have and having no money at all for the rest of your life, it is much easier to become rich. Why? Because you've transcended the fear of being poor. So if you use this as a visualization, you would go back and forth between your intention, between what you want to create, and the opposite of that several times, as I've described in my technique, duality surfing, and then you'd complete this step uh, aligned with your, with your goal. Step six is to let go of the how, when, and where, and let source take care of it. So every time thoughts about how, when, and where of the manifestation arise, you simply breathe them out, release them, forget about them. Because uh, often something can be 99% manifest and you still don't see it. So if somebody's pregnant, the baby can be 99% manifest, but you still don't see the baby. It's still not born. That's because physical reality only takes up 1% of all that you can see, even less than 1%. And something can be nearly completely manifest before you even see any sign of it. So this requires some faith and trust in the ways of the universe, in the ways of the Most High. Reality creation is the art of building and training faith, trust, and belief. Step number seven is to demonstrate and experience the reality you have chosen. That which you demonstrate as behavior and action midwives the um, non-physical energy, crystallizes it into material form, so that manifest manifestation becomes, in fact, easy. You can only receive a reality that you demonstrate, where you demonstrate that you're ready for it, where you're acting as if you are ready for it. You're acting as if you believe it's already true or on the best way to becoming true. So if, for instance, uh, you have a child, you know you would gladly grant your child any wish it has. If it wants a toy, you'd gladly buy that toy because you unconditionally unconditionally love your child. If, on the other hand, your two- or three-year-old child wants to jump into a wild river, you would hold your child back and not grant that wish because your child is not demonstrating readiness. So you say, I'll grant you the wish someday when you demonstrate to me that you're ready to swim through a wild river. So this analogy shows you why you can only have your wishes granted that you demonstrate readiness for. Where you show I'm mature enough to own that and take responsibility for it as my new reality. And it's similar with your relationship to the universe. You are unconditionally loved from high above, and any wish can be granted to you if you demonstrate readiness for it. If you behave and act like the person who's ready for that. If this presentation was helpful to you, and helped you manifest and create the reality of your dreams, please recommend it far and wide. I am Fred Dotson. Thank you very much for attending.